He's house niggers. And this guy in the middle, this brother Chris, this guy seems to love a debate. But me and Tyron, we had a little uh, uh, feeling out process with this guy. And we stopped the mud hole in his ass. He doesn't want any more. Brother Chris and that uh, my hot guy, they don't want no more of this. See, that's why they ban people like us because we'll come out, ask the questions, and we'll expose these people as frauds and phonies that they are. And the white man's niggas. And I charged uh, Farrakhan with the same thing. So last night, this happened. Did you read the. This lady, my eye, let me play a little bit of. Uh... So I hate this guy. This guy is with the uh, Uhuru movement, which is the rainbow. He's part of the rainbow crowd. All they do is talk about the same shit. And he says, uh, yeah, we, we love everybody, all that kind of shit. But that's bullshit. Now, a lot of people were in the chat room shitting on the fact that she bought this coon agent on once again. So let me play. First, let me do this. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> See, look at that survey says everybody says Kwanzaa is a fake holiday. But I want to play this part because this is her response to the people in the chat room hating on this certified, not suspected, but certified coon agent. And listen to how I'm gonna start might have to start calling her a bitch pretty soon. <laughs> because she's a coon agent. They all need to be lynched. But uh, here's what she said. Um, a lot of trolls came into the room tonight. Uh, they, to, to, to be disrespectful to uh, the elder. And, and you said a lot of things that I know that if you were in his face. So that's the thing. They start playing this elder card. Gives a fuck at their elder. If they were cool ages when they were younger, we can take them to task when they're older. Like I always tell you, organized crime, they'll knock off a 90-year-old man with gunshots. Just because. Because they know what the fuck he did in the past. So they had to send a message to let it be known, hey, man, this is how you're going out. These goddamn coons, these people want to come up here and protect them because she's a coon agent herself. So the hell with that elder shit. She did that shit with that Jane Smalls, who's a coon agent too. That's why they, when they, they bring these coons up, they don't want them challenged. Then, then at the end of this shit, she said, you, you, could, you could have stepped up when he was on. No, that's bullshit. She makes sure that you don't step up because you know me, I'm always ready to step up, especially on these coons. This man didn't say a damn thing about nothing. He's got the nerve to talk about COINTEL Pro, how it's still going on today and how we have to be careful, motherfucker. You're the one we have to be careful about. And whoever your kids are. And yeah, let's listen to her. And she denied him. You're going to hear. You're going to hear. Or in my face, you wouldn't see. See, the internet, as I tell so many people, has become the coward's playground. See, we hide behind these screens. We hide behind these names, right? These fake names on the internet, right? And then we turn out. Like Dr. Ma. You don't see who we are. You can't see our true identity. But we know who you are. You created a digital footprint. And your device is attached to it, the internet, which is attached to an IP address. So we know how to find you. I know about computers. Stop that's lying. Besides the point. The point that I'm making is, is this. You're a coward. You are a coward. You're a coward. You'll sit here and throw, throw insults and disrespect an elder, but you go work for white folks every day who disrespect, who not only disrespect, but dis literally killed your ancestors. Put them at the bottom, the bottom of the the dominant hierarchy. They still got their damn foot in our neck. Just in case it's not loud and enough. And so you'll come in here and throw eggs and rocks at an elder, but then get up tomorrow morning to go work for white folks. You go support all of their institutions. You go get gas from white folks. You you. You see, that's what they always do. When you call them out on being coon agents. 
They bring up the white man. We're agents. Again, Elaine Brown, and it's on YouTube. She said during her coon agent training, the main thing that they were supposed to say when somebody sniffs you out as an agent is to call them an agent. Call them the agent. To cause confusion. And to try to save their asses. But see, you notice all these fake black power people, red, black, and green, as you can see, red, black, and green, and the pyramid. Uh, they always say white supremacy, that's you following the white man. But these people are employed by the white man. And what's worse is they're not only employed by the white man, they're being pipped by the white man. And not only are they being pipped by the white man, they're being handed a script to recite by the white man. And many of us know these scripts. That's why when we get on these shows, we can break it down and break their asses down. And they can't do nothing about it because I know that they're bound to follow the script. That's why you got coons like Dr. Myat who will say, fuck it. I don't even want to do battle with this brother. This brother is too hard, too cold. I can't, I can't fuck with him. So she's just like, fuck it. Let me just get rid of him with the quickness. Then you got other uh, idiots like that Bomani guy who's a goddamn idiot along with that Kayla Genesis. They ain't got nobody calling on their show because, you know, who wants to call on the show when you're just going to be getting told off and kicked off as soon as they disagree with you. So they got to have us on for entertainment every now and then. And then they get flustered because there is no disrespect to them, but they start to disrespect with us and they can't answer serious questions. And I'm, I'm going to put the Bomani exchange up that I did last night. I think it was about a half hour, maybe 20 minutes, because he was getting, uh, you know how it is. He couldn't take it. But I didn't want to stretch it out too long. I just kept up with the uh, simple questions. And my man couldn't answer. You know, he, he tries to tell me he answered. And that's the other strategy he tried to employ, which was, you answer my questions. And I made it clear. I stood strong. I said, God damn it, I'm not here to answer your questions. I'm here to ask questions. See, because I'm, I'm tired of playing that game. <laughs> I'm asking you the goddamn questions. And the reason why, you're the one doing the show, talking about the topic. So, goddamn it, I should be able to ask the goddamn questions. And you should be able to answer. So, <clears throat> this is the, the strategies and techniques that they employ. Then you got cool niggers like, uh, yeah, that's what I say, <laughs> like Cy Netter, who it's like, you know what? I'm not taking any chances with this man. And I'm sure that Coon Caribbean uh, Garfield is constantly reminding him to ban me. So he's like, I'm not taking any chances at all with this guy. So, you know, his topics have been born anyway, about the Bible and a bunch of nonsense anyway. Nobody wants to hear all that shit anyway. Children are in the public food system. Shout out to Bob Amin and Uhuru Academy. You, you don't put your children in there. No, 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 no. You send your children to the public school system. So you notice how everybody, Dr. Maa, supports our coon agents. Another coon agent that these Negroes must support or can't put down or disrespect is Farrakhan. I put them down. I'm on a NPR channel going back and forth with Nation of Islam types. I said that Louis Farrakhan on audio called for the murder, his word, and the beheading of the murderers of James Shabazz. And you know, after a while, these guys came back and said, oh, the FBI and J. Edgar Hoover ordered uh, those killings. They did it. You guys are on Hoover's jockstrap or something like that. I said, man, you can try that bullshit with somebody else. 
but that shit doesn't work here. Farrakhan said, I want you to go out and murder. He didn't say go out and deal with, like they deal, like a nation deals with traitors. He said, I want you to go out and murder those who took the life of James Shabazz and bring me their heads. And they did it. Farrakhan didn't even get arrested. But now we know why, because he's a goddamn master mason. Which these coons of the red, black, and green, they never want to mention. We'll see. I, I can't wait till Farrakhan dies because I want to see who flips on him. Like Farrakhan flipped on Muammar Gaddafi right after he got killed. So I want to see who can now talk about Farrakhan after he dies. You sit up here and you, and you get tough. We get tough with each other. We get tough with each other. But then we won't go out there and, and get tough with white folks. We go to work and it's yes, sir, no, sir. And we punch the clock, don't we? Or we go back and we put our money in their banks, don't we? And we go to their supermarkets and we shop in their stores, don't we? Right? So you got all this vitriol for him. But what about the vitriol for the people who actually got their foot on your neck? You got vitriol for him, but then you have George, George Zimmerman is still they always bring that up. signing autographs on Skittles. Where's the vitriol for George Zimmerman? Who killed Trayvon Martin? Where's her rage for George Zimmerman? And that Trayvon Martin, I still maintain that was a fucking phony ass event. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. That was another phony ass event. That's why these cool agents, when you notice when that shit was going on, that's why all of them were talking about that shit nonstop. Just like they talking about this Wakanda forever. I told you they promote all this shit. The Woman King, all this shit they got to talk about. And James Smalls, that's a goddamn coon. I told you that man said, I'm trying to reach those who don't know, not those who do know. Because those who do know, he was essentially saying we're not stupid. So he's trying to reach the idiotic, the brainwash them. These are the faces of coon agents, traitors. This is why we can't progress because of these people, Farrakhan, Jane Smalls, and dare I say, Ashwa Crazy, Dr. Ben. All these coons can't stand them. Where's the vitriol for the officers who killed Tamar Rice and Breonna Taylor and Sarah? What was the girl name? I don't know. Oh, our oh, name Sarah, what y'all tell me the last name, Sa Sandra Blaine. Sandra Bland, where's the vitriol for them? But you're coming here and disrespect an elder and you haven't even done a tenth of what he's done for our people. He created damn right about cultural that. Cultural and educational institutions for our people. Show us your work. Show us your work. Same old lines. Drop a link to in the chat. Drop, drop a link in the chat so we can see your work and how you impacted the community. Drop a link in the chat. So you got all this vitriol <laughs> for the elder, but you sit up here and you smile in white folks' face every day when you- So they use that term elder. You know, it's like when people say, don't talk about my kids. Don't bring my kids into this. Like the world is supposed to stop now. Give a damn if this man's an elder. He's still, he's an elder coon. That's what the hell he was then. That's he's he's one of the people who try to tries to keep us in an African state of mind. Not not should I say keep us, tries to put us in an African state of mind. That bullshit ass Kwanzaa. Bullshit ass goddamn uh pseudo religion. You want to talk about pseudo? That's pseudo. It's bullshit. This coon agent right here, see, she had her legal troubles, so she said. The choice was clear, coon or prison. She chose the coon. Go to work. Every day when you go to work and you're sending your children to the public food system and you want to come play pro-black on the internet. F out of here. I said it. You all want to play pro-black on the damn internet. Play y'all pro-black. I'm pro-black, but in the morning time, your child is going to the public food system, but you don't like white food. <laughs> 
Bob. I got to get this, Bob. I got to get this off my chest, Bob. <laughs> I got to get this off my chest. Y'all play pro-black, fake pro-black activists in here. Children go to the public food system. You don't, your money not in black banks. You bank your money with white folks. You're not even growing your own food. You don't support any black businesses on a daily basis. Let's look at the brands in your house. Do you have Coral Oral? Never you heard of it. That. You ain't got that toothbrush in your house. Or True Laundry Detergent, you ain't got that. Never heard of it. Or Freedom Paper, you ain't got that. What's house. that? Talk all this pro-black stuff. Where is this pro-black marketing at? Dr. Karinga. Fake pro-black actor. They don't sell it at Walmart. Phony and fake. Having done a temple what that man has done. He gave us a cultural holiday. <laughs> he gave us a cultural holiday. That is that is celebrated around the world. Kwanzaa is not just celebrated in the U.S. Kwanzaa is celebrated <laughs> on the continent. Brothers and sisters celebrate Kwanzaa. That's a pan-African holiday Man, that he created. He gave us the Husia, the Odu Ifa. <laughs> he gave us the Ma'at. Do you know a lot of your teachers that you hold in high regard? Learned from Dr. Malana Malana Correa. We're gonna well, I'm read this article in a minute. We're gonna see what they learn. Unity. That's a concept <laughs> that he came up with. Do you know the whole black the black conscious movement? Do you know that he was one of the lead developers of the black conscious movement? Do you even know that? He helped to develop that. He helped orchestrate those black power conferences. I think the first one took place in 1966 in Newark, New Jersey. He was right there. His teachings influenced Steve Biko and the black conscious philosophy and black conscious movement over there in South Africa. Come on, man. Show us your impact. Show us your impact. She won't show us hers. Oh, she Jamesa, points to is that whack ass uh, black self out the chat. Whack ass cartoon. Get out the chat, clown. See, I'm time. I'm time enough for y'all clowns. Bob, it was no coincidence. It was no coincidence why they the ancestors saw a fit Baba. The ancestors saw a fit Baba that uh that they that, I, that, I, that I was cultivated in that I was cultivated in in, in Baltimore. Cause I'm time right. enough for these trolls. I'm hey. time enough. I go. So they keep uh, mentioning these makeshift bullshit African uh titles that we they know damn well none of us know the meaning and most of them don't even know the goddamn meaning so i said the hell with that let me jump on since she didn't want me to jump on when that fat elder bastard coon agent so that's why i disrespect him because he's one of those goddamn coon traders see they got they got traders that they recognize as coon traders and then they'll put them down but you notice how coon traders from the 60s and 70s they talk about George Zimmerman but none of these motherfuckers went after those coon traders from the 60s and 70s those motherfuckers either took themselves out or died of old age or health issues or probably still running around now <laughs> but they talk about some goddamn George Zimmerman why don't you go get George Zimmerman if you care that much you're a revolutionary go get him <laughs> So went on there, obviously, when it comes to these people, as you can see, they got the Ankh. Uh, you know, you put symbolisms uh, up there, like the Ankh, red, black, and green, pyramids, uh, eye, all that kind of shit. These people, you know, they let their guards down. And, you, got, you know, you got to start coming in here and start kissing ass a little bit. Because that's all they do. They like to hear each other, kiss each other's ass. And then try to break it down. But see, she's short temper and she's quick to get you out of here once you start dropping that heat. And she thinks she's smart. She might have a PhD, but she ain't got no PhD over me. Now, listen to this little exchange. And because uh, it's pretty quick. <laughs> <clears throat> And you got to ask yourself, why is she defending this nigga? And that's what I said. Someone else to the chat. I think the, the bill, I see brother Sep Ankara. I probably butchered it, brother. So please forgive me. 
Hope, well, peace hope. and love to you, family. Hotep, how hope are you? Hotep. Yeah, I just want to uh, say a few things in uh, regards to the doctor. Uh, it's good that he came on, you know. did I, I caught it kind of late. Did he talk about Kwanzaa and how he came up with that? No, no, no. He talked about that in his last interview. So right, today, uh, today he focused more so on, you know, COINTELPRO and, and what took place, you know, in the 50s all the way to the early 70s with, you know, COINTELPRO and Black activist, ad, activism. So he talked about oh, that okay. and, and what COINTELPRO looks like today. Okay, yeah, he he would definitely know about that. He and uh, Mr. Farrakhan, because they're definitely part of the COINTEL Pro uh, movement. And this man tortured and beat black women. Uh, did he talk about that? Oh God! So you one of them people that want to come in? Let me ask you a question. What happened with the? I never read the case, but let me ask you this question, brother. I want to ask you this: What happened with the the black women? Because I did hear some things. But what was what was going on with that? Yeah, so these were these were black women that he just grabbed off of the street and started torturing them. Is that what you're saying, brother? Well, in a, in a, in a simplistic way, yes. No, it wasn't. That's, that's no, false. Well, in a, in a, I, I, I actually I asked you the question, but I knew the answer to it. But what you just said was false. Right. In these, a these weren't in a simplistic way. No, these weren't black women that were randomly targeted. Well, were happened. they were they beaten and tortured though? I'm not sure. I didn't read the case. Did you oh, read oh you read, you read that. Did you, you, did, you read the, did you read? Did you read the case, brother? Or you just I, I, over I, here? Actually, did actually, you read I, the case? Did actually, you read the case? Oh, uh, well, I'm answering. I did read a little bit of it, and I read that you read a was, you read a little bit of it. Right. Let me ask you a question. How come you didn't know these weren't random females? Then, if you read the case, well, I, I didn't say random. I said they were black women. No, I. Oh my God, I don't. I don't have time. She that. heard me. I mean, I, I can't, y'all. Yeah, you heard me. I can't. <laughs> I can't with the clowns. Anybody else want to come in? So she thinks she could trick me. You Anybody can't trick else me. Want to come in? Anybody else want to come in? I trick you. You don't I trick me. I can't with the clowns, sir. Post, sir. Post your, post your, um, post your work in the chat so we can see what you did. Baba, he going into, oh, he he tortured black women and did this yeah. to black women. Yeah. And, yeah, He's going into yeah. all of that. I'm like, brother, did you read the case with these random black women that got tortured, or did you read the whole case? Does it matter oh, if they were random or kidnapped or his uh, oh, wives or what? I mean, in a simplistic <laughs> way, yeah. I knew that that was a lie. I threw that out there. Right. She's a black woman defending this guy. Was, see what I was dealing with? Like, right. Yeah, yeah, in a simplistic way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. then he said, well, yeah, I read the case. Well, you read the case that you knew that right. it wasn't random. And then you said that it happened. Did you actually read mm -hmm. the case? And what I mean by the case, Bob, is I'm talking about the actual transcripts. So you know right. that when there's a court case, and that's why I tell people all the time, stop listening to people on the Internet. Mm -hmm. If you really want like to know about a case, I'm not that invested in going back and reading right. somebody's court, court case. Right. That ain't my, that's not my thing. Why'd you I'm ask me if I read it? That's with the feds and police. You want to go read somebody's court file. I'm not into that. But if you right. really, if you're into that and you want to know, that stuff is public information. You can actually go to case search. You can actually order the transcripts from somebody's case and read the file. And so a lot of these people, I noticed what the brother said is everything started off with I heard, I heard, well I heard, well I heard, well I heard. Well, did right. you get the transcripts and read the case? Because mm -hmm. everyone is. I'm like sure she heard too. Things, and then all we do is repeat them. And then we just yeah, and then we, we we regurgitate them, we repeat them, and then it just spreads, right. and before you know it, it becomes truth, and nobody right. actually did their right. due diligence. Right, right. You know, nobody did. Yeah, nobody did their due diligence. You get what right. I'm saying? And I just so they cut me I, off. I, so I can't talk to myself. You know, we get, romanticize this guy right here is a coon. Make a coon probably gay too, and I said probably. <laughs> yeah, that guy. See, she's a coon. You see how she tries to uh, think she's tricking me. I already know. Uh, trust me, I'm already well ahead of these coon agents, even the ones who are actually formally educated. You know, so she can't trick me. I choose my words very carefully because you have to do that with these coon agents because you know she's going to try to do something like she just tried to pull just now. She is a black woman defending, and now we're talking in 2022, going on 2023 where the powers that be keep talking about girl power, you know, and abuse women, all that kind of shit. And you got a woman defending a man who, <laughs> he didn't just slap women around. I'm about to read this article written in December 26, 2018. You see the title, 
the Federalist Papers. I think that's the paper that <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald had in his hand. Uh, the evil truth about the creator of Kwanzaa who tortured women. They said tens of thousands of African-Americans are celebrating Kwanzaa again. I think that's at best <laughs> tens of thousands at best. But many of those celebrating have no idea what the truth is, the truth of this holiday actually is. The frightening truth is that uh, truth is that this, that it was invented by a man, Maluna Nabatisa Karanga. They always got to choose some complicated ass name to try to sound sophisticated and shit. Who went to prison uh, after he was convicted of, of, I'm sure they meant, of keeping women in his home and torturing them. The Daily uh, Caller reported, I'm going to go to that Daily uh, Caller in a minute. Karanga was convicted in 1971 for brutally torturing two naked women. You hear me, Dr. Ma? I know you know this shit. But I'm going to say it anyway because you're too sh chicken shit to even say it. But you're a coon agent, so you got to make another coon agent look good. Try to repair his goddamn rep and act like this shit didn't happen. Talking about whether or not the women were random women or whether or not he knew them. The fuck difference does it make? That's like saying if somebody raped a woman, it's worse if it was a uh, it's less worse if it was a random woman or not as bad if he knew him. Is this is this bitch out of her mind? <laughs> yeah, Doctor Ma, you just graduated to the level of bitch. <laughs> so Karanga was uh, convicted uh, in 1971 for brutally torturing two naked women. The weapons of torture included a soldering iron, a vice, and of course, <laughs> a toaster. Now, anybody who has uh, experience with a soldering iron, you know that gets pretty hot. <clears throat> the women were members of Karanga's ultra-radical paramilitary black nationalist cult. They called an organization, they called it a cult, called the the US organization, which went by the acronym US, uh, US, according to contemporaneous news stories. Investigators said that the women were held at gunpoint, forced to disrobe, and were beaten. Deborah Jones, who was once given the Swahili title of an African queen, said she and Gail Davis were whipped with an electrical cord and beaten with a karate baton <laughs> after being ordered to remove their clothes. A Los Angeles Times article reports. Now, when I was a child, my mother beat the hell out of us with a doubled up extension cord. And I tell you, you know, you think of all the copper wire in that shit being doubled up. And it is what you think it is. It's like a goddamn whip. You ain't here, you ain't feeling that rubber, you feeling that copper. <laughs> and that shit wasn't fun. So imagine getting that shit done to you as a grown woman by a grown man. If my mother beat the hell out of me with that, imagine what that shit had to feel like coming from a man, a crazed man at that. So Karanga tortured Jones and Davis with the help of other members of his cult because Karanga believed that the torture victims were using magic crystals to assassinate him on behalf of his enemies. Now that sounds like a nut to me. She calls this man an elder and a baba and all that bullshit. <clears throat> the victim said they were living at, at Karanga's home when Karanga accused them of trying to kill him by placing crystals in his food and water and in various areas of his house. Jones and Davis denied the charge that they were using special crystals to murder Karanga. The denials were reportedly not helpful. When they denied it, allegedly they were beaten with electrical cord and a hot soldering iron was put in Miss Davis' mouth and against her face. The contemporaneous 1971 newspaper article says, Jones also testified that one of her own big toes was Titan in a vice. This, this is a sick motherfucker, and she's revering this guy. Karanga, head of us, also put detergent and running hoses in their mouths. Water torture. Almost military style. Miss uh, Tamara reportedly put detergent in their mouths. Uh, Smith turned a water hose full force on their faces and Karanga holding a gun threatened to shoot both of them. 
the victims also said they were hit on their heads with toasters. <laughs> I hate to laugh because that's stupid, but I'm like, toasters, goddamn. I think toasters back in 1971, those motherfuckers are made out of steel, I think. <laughs> so, not no plastic. So, you know, those shits hurt. <laughs> a lot heavier. Uh, hell, for all we know, there could have been some leftover toasters from the 50s or 60s or, or even 40s. You know, those shits were even heavier. <laughs> so, Vietnamese torture is nothing compared to what I know, Karanka allegedly said during a lengthy bout of torture. Many on Twitter torch the holiday. This guy, M- Michael Massey, Quans is a damnable lie. How can it be an alternative to Christmas when we celebrate Christmas as birth, birth, Christ, birth of Christ the Savior? A black man invented ho- a black man invented holiday to lead blacks away from Christ and blacks foolishly embrace the lie. Then he says this is the first day of Kwanzaa, a uniquely race centric observance in which. Adherents practice seven Swahili words, seven candles, then number seven, seven circle Quran, nation of Islam, then number seven. The old Symbianese Liberation Army was originated by sadistic torture of women. And you know Dr. Ma knows about this peanut head son of a bitch. <laughs> Man, still got the same shades after all these years. Look at that. Menorah. Kwanzaa is the fake holiday created by a criminal. Uh, Juan Karenga kidnapped two of his own female followers, stripped them naked, whipped them with electrical cords, beat them with a karate baton, placed a hot soldering iron in one of the victim's mouth, then toes and device poured detergent on their mouth. Standing in front of the candles is Kwanzaa founder Malena Maluna Karenga, who was convicted of torturing two women with electrical cords. And Kuhn agents got the nerve to revere this Negro, pseudo Negro, anyway. Let's see what this Daily Caller was this all about. It says, It's Christmas time, America. You know what that means? It's almost Kwanzaa. Blah, 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 blah. This says, A public service, then the Daily Caller is once again here to tell you the true and truly bizarre history of the violent, deranged, and radical black nationalists who concocted the completely artificial holiday of Kwanzaa back in 1966. Yeah, a lot of shit happened in 1966 concerning black shit. Black Panthers coming out, all types of shit. The creator of Kwanzaa is a Maluna, Nezabedeza, whatever you pronounce that, Karenga, 77-year-old professor of Africana studies. Professor? <laughs> a, a fucking... Ex-con who tor- beat and tortured women became a professor. These no wonder why they call California and all these universities, Yale and all that shit, liberal universities. They hook these people up because they're cool ages. That's why they hook them up. Just like that weather underground people going to college university and shit after they kill. All this shit is related. All this shit is. And all this shit is related to the small hats, too, because they're all behind all this shit. His real name is Ronald Everett. He was born in rural Maryland, the 14th child of a sharecropping Baptist minister. Karenga was convicted in 1971 for brutally torturing two naked women. The weapons of torture included a soldering iron vice and, of course, a toaster. The women were members of blah, 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 blah. Investigators said the women were held at gunpoint, forced to disrobe, and were beaten. Deborah Jones, blah, blah, blah. They just took it from there. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Jones also testified one of her big toes, blah, 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 blah. The psychiatrist who examined Karanga in 1971 concluded he was insane. Sounds like it to me, talking about some magic crystals uh, <laughs> to try and kill him. A sentencing hearing transcript shows that the unidentified psychiatrist believed that, he, that the founder of Kwanzaa was both paranoid and schizophrenic. Judge Arthur, and this is who Dr. Ma is defending. Judge Arthur L. Alacron ordered Karanga to undergo mental testing to determine whether Karanga had so deteriorated mentally that he was a threat to society. The judge read from the psychiatrist's report in 1971. 
According to a front page magazine report, since his admission here, he's been isolated and has been exhibiting bizarre behavior. And this motherfucker was made a college professor. And all this shit is on the record. That he's a sick motherfucker and a coon agent. Such as staring at the wall, talking to imaginary persons, claiming that he was attacked by dive bombers, <laughs> that his attorney was in the next cell. The psychiatrist report said in part, during part of the interview, he would look around as if reacting to hallucination. And when the examiner walked away for a moment, he began a conversation with the blanket located on his bed. Now, if that ain't a sick motherfucker, I don't know what is. <laughs> this man now presents a picture which can be considered both paranoid and schizophrenic with hallucinations and delusions, inappropriate effect, disorganization, and impaired contact with the environment, the report said. They say brainwash, innocent, or genuine, blah, blah, blah. Then it says seven principles, blah, 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 blah. U.S. blah blah internalist Sibianese seven principles. Okay, so the Sibianese Liberation Army seven principles: unity, self determination, collective work, responsibility. I think Khaled Mohammed was kicking some of this shit too. Coochie Chakalia shit. Uh, these seven Kwanzaa principles are identical identical to the seven principles of the infamous Sibianese Liberation Army. Uh, the murderous bank robbing gang of revolutionary terrorists who kidnapped newspaper heiress uh, Patty Hearst in 1974. During the 75 bank robbery, bar, <coughs> excuse me, bank robbery, the Simeonese Liberation Army members murdered Myrna Opsal, a bank customer. Damn, a customer. 42 year old mother of four bled to death on the floor of the bank. Uh, you notice how all these radicals who killed and bombed and destroyed the universities seem to support these people and they hook them up because the university is run by small hats, which a lot of these Negroes, red, black, and green, they want to deny. Members of Karango's US organization murdered two Black Panthers in cold blood. The murders occurred in 1969 when the US organization and the Black Panthers were fighting over which group would control the new African American Studies Center. Damn, that's a reason to fight. <laughs> at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. They were reportedly in acrimonious meeting after two members of the US organization, brothers George P. Steiner and Larry Joseph Steiner, accosted two Black Panthers, John Jerome Huggins, also known as uh, Bunchy and Apprentice Bunchy Carter, and shot them to death. The Panthers were also armed, and one of them apparently shot one of the Steiner brothers in the shoulder. Karanga just spent just four years in prison. He received a sentence of between one and 10 years felonious assault and imprisonment uh, in 1971 related to the torture of Jones and Gail Davis. So, <clears throat> and this is before he tortured those women. This happened. A uh, successful campaign of supporters who were role letters to state officials led to a grant of parole. Now, why would they want to help this guy out? Because he's a coon agent. Karanga received a PhD in 1976 from United States International University. Man, that sounds like some CIA type shit. <laughs> in San Diego. The school is now a for-profit institution called Alliant International University. Karanga also received a PhD from the University of Southern California in 1994. <clears throat> I wonder if he actually had to work for it since he was sick. The name changed. At some point in the 60s, Karanga decided that he didn't want to be Ron Everett any longer. Instead, he gave himself the name Maluna, which is Swahili for master teacher. Ah. Karanga means keeper of tradition, kum tradition in Swahili. Ain't that something? Let's see. This United States International University, because this has the name of a CIA type of situation going on here. It was a nonprofit that was accredited by the Western Association of Schools at its peak. It had two additional blah, 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 1924 to 2001. 
Uh, so where is school? I'm going to do some more research in that school at a later date, but that sounds like one of those CIA-funded uh, uh, institutions. Uh, let me just look at this other... Here it is right here. Let's see what they got to say. <clears throat> Come on. So maybe this magazine's not in effect anymore. See, sometimes, though, when you get links and shit or articles, you got to save these shits sometimes because they'll, they'll wipe the shits out. Anyway, we get the idea with that. And again, this segues into these black coons. Uh, this guy looks like a coon, too. I'm calling all of them out. This is another master coon right here. Farrakhan is a zoot suit on. This one says Jewish control over black entertainers. They have the expertise. They attach themselves to our talent. They are the managers, the agents, and they are the accountants. And that's why our black artists loved fame and got fame but died poor because somebody else got their money. In other words, she's talking about a small hat Jewish conspiracy to all you coons out there who support Farrakhan. Now, he said it. You can't go against him because he's a master mason. So what the hell are you trying to convince other black people of the opposite for? Your coon agents. Red, black, and green stands for coon. Now, just this little thing right here real quick. This is only a small sampling <laughs> of Jewish uh, NFL owners. Arthur Blank right here. I'm sure you remember him when the Patriots uh, beat the Falcons in the Super Bowl. He was dancing like, okay, I got the Super Bowl. Then he was like, oh, shit, I can't believe this shit. He owns uh, what is it, Home Depot. See, so beyond the football team, they all own these capos. They own a, <laughs> a significant uh, cultural piece of the United States because, like I said in other videos, they own the money. They own the banks. Coon agents, they don't want to They want to act like, oh, no, nah, man, they don't own nothing. And I always tell them, somebody has to own something. Just like you see Manhattan. Hell, you see any city you see. Somebody owns the goddamn skyscrapers. They're not just there just to be there. Somebody owns the shit. And shit that just keeps on getting put up every day, and you see it in front of your faces. Somebody owns that. Somebody paid the money. And nine times out of ten, if it's not a small hat, it might be an Asian from, but they usually got it back from their master country, China, Korea, somewhere like that. Because I think Koreans put up that uh, Wilkshire Grand uh, skyscraper in Los Angeles. I think that's a Korean operation. But see, an individual businessman can't do that. But these small hats could do that. Just like you saw with that Silverstein with the World Trade Center. And I think that was probably the first time that people got to have a face and a name attached to such uh, significant buildings. I think the man got $14 billion out of the deal, the insurance deal or something like that. So everything is a scheme. None of them lose. You might lose, but they're not losing because it's designed to make them win. And this Robert Kraft, another small hat. <clears throat> uh, you know, people, they get into the media, they got different names. And a lot of people don't think about the names that they have. And you even got some were mixed. Well, they're all mixed, really, but with different names. Russo, 
uh, all types of shit. It's to trick people. So you got Robert Kraft. Uh, and he also, again, Robert Kraft with the Patriots when it comes to sports conspiracies when that 9-11 took place. See, he owned the team. Silverstein owned the uh, World Trade. <laughs> you had small hat conspiracy theories coming out. And of course, the Patriots, for some odd reason, won the Super Bowl that year. The Patriots, again, you, you won't convince me otherwise that this shit was fucking staged. Just like that last year's Super Bowl. Patriots were not on the map before then. Now, I know a lot of people might look back and say, well, the Patriots went to the Super Bowl in 85 and went to one in 1996, but they got stomped each time. And when you look back on this, where did they did go? Because there were no competition. <laughs> but then they battled the high-powered St. Louis Rams with a new quarterback. And all of a sudden, and of course, that tuck rule, which Brady admitted that he said, nah, that, that, that was BS, but he didn't give a damn, of course. And a team who just redesigned their uniforms again, called Patriots, red, white, and blue uniforms, American flag logo, mixed in with the ego and the Patriots. You know, Patriots are kind of like the Philadelphia Eagles, you know, the colonial, uh, uh, you know, the, the look and the, and the branding. So that was a perfect team, more so than the Eagles to win because it was called Patriots. And, you know, they wanted the United States to stand together over the attacks. But of course, like Alex Jones used to say, it's an inside job. And these are the guilty people. And when I say these guys, I'm talking small hats. And it's destroy is to help destroy uh, Israel's enemies over in the so-called Middle East, which they subsequently did, except for Syria and Iran. And Iran is the big dog because of the terrain of the country and the size of the country. You know, it's hard going to war, fighting in mountains. That's a hard thing to do. You know, climb mountains and shit. You don't have, uh, it's not too much military equipment that can just go climbing, mountain climbing and shit and going to war with ease. You know, it's a difficult situation. So that's why it takes longer because they, they already put Saddam Hussein up to it and he couldn't get the job done. So what he got for his troubles, he got hanged. That's what he got. <laughs> it's fucked up. But I'll say these are the, now you know where they get the, get the movie ideas for megalomaniacs who use people for what they want and then kill them after they get what they want. They didn't pull that type of uh, ideas out of their asses, man. That, that shit is real. And small ass make the movies, so they got the inside track on shit. So you got Robert Kraft, Mark Davis, with his crazy ass hairdo. But you see, the key thing is you see how these guys look. And you see how these, this guy looks. You know, they look kind of pretty different from each other. And then they all make you look like, or make you think that these guys did it through hard work. High intelligence. They are intelligent, but they got they all got the hookup. Glazer family, and you notice how they all, except for the Falcons, got Super Bowls. Buccaneers got theirs. This is an ugly ass guy. When I keep hearing Glazer family, is I keep saying, ah, man, he's small ass. They got it fixed. And they just happened to have won the Super Bowl in their uh, stadium. Then the funny part is the Rams did too. I think the Rams owners a uh, small hat too. Jim Ursay, drug addict and an alcoholic, <laughs> messing up his team. Lori, remember the situation he got in with uh, Deshaun Jackson about some type of uh, thing? You know, this is a trend, which segues into the uh, avatar, the topic of the show. Is just, They always get, get these black guys who they pay a lot of money to say these things. It's all contrived. 
they come up with it, say, oh, they're, they're anti-Semitic. It's the same routine. They want to stand strong. Then after a while, they get they get shown the error of their ways. And the small has to tell them, uh, you can't say it the way you want to say it. We're going to tell you how it's going to be said. But it's all pre-planned. It's all theater from the beginning. Never be fooled by theatrics. This is why I keep trying to tell you. That's why Kroon control agents on YouTube, they come out and they try to tell you the small hat side of the story that you got to believe. And when it comes to events like the H that you pay a cost to, <laughs> they want to try to tell you that that was real. Just like uh, Tariq Nashi, the Black Authority, you notice how they always make mention of it and say, oh, when they when the Jews were in that, uh, they fought through it all. They're kissing their asses, man, because they're on the take. They're coons. Stephen Ross, Dolphins, racist too, by the way. Snyder, another racist. And again, Dan. Tish of the Giants, he's, uh, I think he's the second uh, owner, minority owner or co-owner, and you could bet after a while he's going to work his way in and take total control. <laughs> Ziggy Wolf, Vikings. And these are just a few. And these are just, this is just in the NFL. Now, is it a coincidence that so many of them are billionaires? And beyond? We don't even want to get into the NBA. And these are, again, these are just a few of these guys. Most of the NFL, most of these sports teams are owned by these guys. They get you a token guy like a Shad Khan or that uh, side guy from the, the Nets. And you notice how they got to be Asian. There was a black guy who was leading the team years ago who was trying to buy the Vikings. And they denied him. See, they won't let you in. They'll let a token Asian in. That's for international relations. That's for, believe me, that's for nothing else. That's for international relations. Because they still got to deal with these Asians because the small has to try to take total control of the earth. And the Asians are formidable and growing in power. So they got to, I've been telling you before, they got to reel the Chinese in because they were supposed to be communists. And they started dangling carrots in front of them with their economy and made them a largest trading partner with the West. And what that does is that gets them hooked onto the economy, the money, the wealth. That's why China has been going all over the world and they've been spreading that money around, buying shit because they know it's, it's a li time limit on this shit. That's why. Uh, anybody who's into the world of audio, high-end audio, what have you, China, China's been going around buying up a lot of name brand or once name brand audio companies. And they own the shit. And a few TV companies. I think there's TVs out there. It was a TCL, Hisense, and what's that other uh, brand? I think it's, it used to be big. I forgot. Sorry, with A on TVs. Whatever the case is, a lot of these TVs are made by China. I think the lone Japanese TV manufacturer now is Sony. Japanese used to be big. Then you got Koreans and Samsung and uh, LG. And then China goes to other countries, giving out loans and stuff. So they know they got to work fast because as you see, the cost of living is going up and it's designed by these guys. Excuse me. It's designed by these guys. So they own all the money. So everybody else's cost of living can go up, but theirs never will because they literally own all of the money 
They created the economy. They decide what the market is going to be. They know what you can make and what you can't make because if you're not one of them, you're not making anything. Even in the world of organized crime, they run that. The Italians can make what they can make because they authorized it. When they put hits on my bosses, you think it's Don Corleone who, who's, who said, let's do it? It's these small hats. I tell you again, every time you watch a mob movie, movie, watch it carefully. You will find that there is a small hat in the background who they can't touch. And a small hat, you can look up any Don throughout the nation. And you always find, you gotta look real deep, that there is a small hat ultimate boss in each area. And they run the, the Italians and the Irish. And that's no lie. You watch that movie Sparkle, the original one. You see, that's, that's the thing. See, they'll put it there, but they won't make it explicit. But when it's the time for the Italians, they make it explicit that his name is the Don uh, Gigliardi. You know, they want you to know it's an Italian, but they don't want you to know that a gangster is a small hat. And they run the show. And the reason why they run the show is because they have all, the money is theirs. You can't tell anybody who knows that, that it's not. That's why every time things pop up, you see billionaire after billionaire, small hat, including that Clippers owner. I think Bill Gates is a, a small hat as well. Uh, Linus Tech Tips on YouTube, probably one of the biggest YouTube channels around, has the computer market corner on the internet. He's Canadian. He's a small hat. <laughs> Everybody, almost every white person that you see in media, news, entertainment, they're small hats. I've been telling people this for years. And a lot of the opposition to the small hats are small hats. The money is unlimited for these guys. Matter of fact, hell, look at this. Look at the, the writer of this article, Eddie Samuels. That's a small hat. <laughs> I mean, in every newspaper, well, this is the Jewish Times, Atlanta Jewish Times. <laughs> but uh, you look at any paper, large or small, major or minor, you're going to find small hats running it at all times because they have to, this is their vehicle to spread propaganda. It keeps you away from them and it puts everything else on everybody else. That's why I always tell you when I had the other channel, when I had the, what was the name of the title? Hollywood, I was doing the movie thing, showing how the small hats would always humiliate and show racism towards black people in their movies. So every time I watch a movie, if I spot out, spot out some clear racism, I would save a clip and put it on, the, uh, on YouTube. Racism in Hollywood, that's what it was called. And I'm going to start putting that up again because I've been seeing some and some movies I've been watching again. Uh, but overwhelmingly, traditionally, the racism against, is against Black Americans. And then after that, Asians get the worst of it after us. Hispanics, believe it or not, they don't really get it like that. Not in the movies. And they use what I call Hollywood Hispanics, similar color in the family. When that's not, hell, I was just going to the store today <laughs> and looking at all different types of Hispanics. I'm looking at their kids. I'm like, damn, you see some with black kids, uh, some with white looking kids, some with black looking kid and a white looking kid. 
and Mexican kid. And I'm like, God damn, that's that's the real deal. They in Hollywood, they got you thinking everybody looks the same in a goddamn Hispanic uh, family. They can, they can look all kinds of ways. But see, their agents tell you that it's all white supremacy. Well, if it's all white supremacy, how come these motherfuckers got all the money? If it's all white. No matter what you do, there's always a leader of something. And these are the leaders. But see, they want you to think about everybody but them. Because once you identify them as the cause of all your problems, you start thinking to yourself, well, how come they got on every goddamn thing, but nobody else can? Well, they put together a good game plan, which is good because it's working out. But they also hate black people. That's weird, too. It's another thing. It's like at the same time, they support black people. And I think when you look at a lot of these small hats, like I pointed out over the years, like Karl Marx, you see a lot of blackness and a lot of them. And I think that might be part of the game plan, but we'll see. I mean, but to me, they've done more harm to us than good. I haven't seen any good yet. And NAACP, all that Urban League, all that kind of shit, to me, that's more of a control thing than a helpful thing. In a way, you could you could argue that they antagonize white America more than they try to rationalize things because most of the hate trade towards us came from them and passed along to the white people. Whether it's a distraction, why they do their thing. I mean, you can't tell me that white people don't know that these people are small hats. Can't tell me that. White people know more than uh, other people know. <laughs> so I said that, let me just see what's going on here. So stop screen, let me put this invite on. Let's see if uh, Ray S in particular Alcorn says it's all about the physical. When did you hear me say that? I just told you they come in all different uh, phenotypes and names. They got rid of the so-called black Sephardic true Jew bankers and asserted them. Well, not really, because they got that Ben Bernanke, who, <clears throat> you know, he's not necessarily a white dude. <laughs> yeah, what's going on, brother? Truth for troll. Oh, uh, nigga, you lie? Yeah. And the way you was giving that presentation, man, I thought that was a pre recording. <laughs> Yo, turf in the chat, man. I, I guess I was wrong, man. I damn sure thought it was a pre recording, man. How you been, man? Sure, I've been hanging in there, man. I'm getting tired of these damn coons on YouTube, man. Yo, I've been seeing this shit, and this has been the craziest shit. Yo, for dudes to be calling, like, and, and, and I don't want to get into the, because I feel like everybody got their agenda, right? Like, I even feel like Kyrie Irving got an agenda, you know what I'm saying, uh, with, the, with the whole situation going on with him. But to the people who really uneducated to what the people who own, you said something that made me think, and you said, um, you said you don't got to run nothing if you own it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And these people really own every damn thing and well probably i say about 80 percent of things they own it because you, the, you got the little asians who they they own a little bit i feel like asians own like 20 percent, but they ain't messing with the small hats when they come to ownership right. you know they probably got some contracts with the small hats but when you, you look they at, have to have it you can't yeah. do business without it <laughs> <laughs> but when you look at what the small hats actually believe in and I was shocked that Shaquille O'Neal, you know, like dudes who I felt like was, you know, Shannon Sharp, man. 
you know, like, granted, I understand, like, I understand who platforms they own. But when you look at, I'll use Shannon Sharp for an example. When you look at his podcast versus when he's on uh, the show with Skip Bayless, all his talking points are completely opposite. When he on the show with Skip Bailey, she say things that he would never say on his podcast. It's like he's a whole different dude. He get to be himself on his podcast. But when he when this ass got to sit up there in the morning on national television, all of his talking points are just different. It's like two different people, man. It's like uh, it's like Khalid Muhammad turning into Farrakhan when he's on <laughs> when he's on ESPN. You know, they talking points is way different. And, um, you know, I, I I was looking at that. But when they say uh, anti-Semitism, forgetting, like, not even including the fact that when you look at the tumult or whatever that book is that they believe in, right, they clearly state that it's better if anybody of any other nation is in the is, is is drowning, right? Like let's say somebody else is in the sea and you a small hat. You will be going against being a small hat by even helping them or saving them from drowning. It's better for you to let them drown or if you don't, you bring dishonor to yourself as a small hat. <sighs> This is the shit that they actually believe, right? Um, if ain't nobody equal, <laughs> ain't nobody equal to you being a small hat. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You got to understand that this is what this is the premises of white supremacy. But even what we know as white supremacists fall under the ladder of the small hat. The small hat sit at the top of that shit. You know what I'm saying? And then, then I guess you could consider the European or the, or the or the regular white boy that we know today to be number two. But the small hat said that because because all whites ain't the same. They they different in their own ways. You know, uh, Irish, Russians, uh, Englishmen. Can't, can't tell it uh, to those RGBs. They won't even throw Hispanics in there as white. <laughs> <laughs> These people are sick. That's an agenda too, by the way. Brainwashing agenda. And you know, man, I didn't know y'all was on a, and oh God, that you was playing this uh, early in the show. She was really on the bullshit, man. And you know, uh, I thought I thought that was Psychopathia show you was on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, this is Psychopathia. Damn. You know, uh, I can't remember the girl name from the, well, the woman's name for that show because if she listening, she probably. Try to like get me canceled and say calling up God. The, the <laughs> lady's name from that show, I can't remember it, but I, I think you Renee? know what I'm talking about. Renee? Yeah, but she damn sure sounded like her. <laughs> but see, this is a script that these guys come with, and they must recite the script. When they go off script, they don't know what to say. When they go off script, you know how you could tell when they go off script? It's always a problem with the microphone and shit click out for like a few seconds. That's because somebody done called and got their asses in line and then they come back with the script like and everything, everything is all back. You know, it's, it's all back together and they just come back on like nothing ever happened. You know, um, yo, Ray Ray, I seen you in the chat, man. What up? Um, you know, but for the most part, that's how I feel like they moving when they script it because it's not really a I'll give you an example of what I mean by how I feel as though when things are scripted. They're using Kyrie Irving to promote this movie from Hebrews to Negroes. That's what it appears to be, you know? And now check this out. Everybody in the chat know if they've been listening to the show since I first came on, everybody, I never get into religion or spiritual belief, but I let everybody know. Y'all all know I believe in the Bible. This ain't nothing new. But even though I believe we Hebrews, there's a difference between me and the mother dudes. And this is the main difference. If anybody is telling you that Hebrews 
come from Africa, he's a fucking agent because that shit is not true. I believe life started right here in what we call the Americas, right? So why would I say this? They teaching by default that, I'll put it like this. If I could tell you 99% of the truth and just throw 1% of the lie in there, I could still make sure you fucked up, even though you feel as though you're on the right track. So even that movie still preached that we come from Africa. And that right there is the main, like, no matter what, they want this land to themselves. So on one hand, it's like, yeah, this brother saying we, 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 we God's children from the Bible. You know what I'm saying? And that's our land over there in Africa. Nah, my nigga, uh-uh. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I can't, I can't back that up because it's like giving them the most important land in all of existence. This where all the this where everybody coming to. You know what? I think you're right because I was watching some videos about Central Asia and Russia and even China, and really, I was like, damn, these other countries, they're really sitting on bad land. But then the United States got luck, lucky and lucked out and got the, the overall best shit. Yo, my little sister-in-law, my sister-in-law asked me yesterday. I was I was at my brother's house. And so she's like, oh, my brother was at work. He was he was on the way home. And so she like, what you mean? She like, I looked at you on YouTube. And you and this help my dude. Y'all, y'all literally saying that we don't come from Africa. How can you prove we don't come from Africa? I said, how can you prove we do? She was like, damn, you know, I never thought about that. <laughs> I said, well, she said, well, you know, it got slave ships. I said, no, it got cartoons. Say let's 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 go ahead and pull up slave ships, and I'm all you gonna show me is cartoons. And so when these brothers go to saying, "Yo, we guys children, we came from Africa." Well, the scripture or the Bible, everything is in context. So, no matter what God's children was, that's always where Israel or Israel was. It was never a physical place. It was never a physical place that you could go to. That's like that's like me saying that's like Elquan to people in the chat. I'm gonna give y'all an example of what I mean. That's like Elquan having ten sons, right, or twelve sons, right, and I'm one of his sons' best friends. And so Elquan from New York, I'm from New Orleans. I moved to Tennessee and meet Elquan's oldest son, right. But then his oldest son moved from Tennessee and go to Florida. And so uh, my wife write down that. Okay, so Joseph moved from Florida, or uh, moved from Tennessee, and he went to the land of Elquan in the Floridas, <laughs> right? So when she say I moved to the land of Elquan, she's saying that I went amongst Elquan's sons. I'm around Elquan's people. You dig? So this is how people wrote back in the day because if the if 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 I'm reading a book called 1611 King James Version, I got to look at the definitions. Are the words that was in 1611. It's just like today, uh, if you in court, the definitions is different than what you read in the Webster's Dictionary. Right. You know what I'm saying? So in court, you don't got to study the laws because they change all the time. But if you know the words and the definition, if you know the definitions of the words that they're using, you could never get fucked up. And because one of the easiest you know the ways to, that, you know, you, learn, that they're learn, using in their hood. Learn Latin. So, that's, that's one of the easiest ways to learn the uh, the, the court language that's how i did it which is why i tell people yo look i ain't gotta sit up here and teach you laws or none of that now nah, what up tyron just yeah just buy you a law definition a, a, a law dictionary look at those definitions and you will never be messed up you could you could literally study that the same way you studied in school and learn vocabulary tests and you'll be able to know whatever <clears throat> you hearing when you go to court because you know the legal definition which is different than the lawful definition but when I was looking at the Kyrie Irving situation, I was saying to myself, what now? You know, real quick, let me just say something about this America's First Rifleman. See, now that I, I let the link on, now he doesn't want to come on. He probably yeah, his ass, well, I forgot about his bitch ass. My bad, <laughs> Rifleman, I ain't mean to call you no bitch, Elfine, you got the flow. <laughs> so he says, uh, he says uh, he's a scholar, because I talked about Kayla Genesis being a jack uh, idiot. He says, uh, <laughs> Kayla, Genesis, uh, he, Kayla Genesis knows more about Africans than you. Well, you check out last night the the first show that Omani did, and and did matter of fact the second show because Kayla Genesis was talking about uh, 
Egypt used to rule South Sudan. Mm-hmm. And then he says something. He says some name is called some. Uh, uh, he said some shit. Some Arab Sudan. It was uh, run by Arabs and all that kind of stuff. I said nope, nope, nope. I said it was called the Anglo Egyptian Sudan, and it was run by the British and co-run by the Ottoman Turks. There were no Arabs then, and that's recent history. So I said, this is I, every time we go on these people's places, we teach them more about Africa than these pan Africanists can even remember. Yeah. Because, because these people, don't, the, they don't know nothing about it. Funny part about those individuals, they know nothing about Africa politically. Right. Is that Tyron? Yep. The funny thing about Pan-Africans, they don't know nothing about Africa politically or historically or culturally. They just assume just because you get a pretty picture of like white supremacy talking shit about them and the pyramids and the kingdoms and the dynasties that they don't actually look at the bigger picture that Africans don't like get along with each other. They have different like nuances and they consider themselves not the same thing. And when you get into the conversation with some of these Africans, they are the most ignorant of people out there because like they'll see the same rhetoric white supremacists is spewing and divide up the, um, their own continent even further. Yep, because they're a bunch of dimwits and frauds. I told yeah. that Bamani that last night. I said, you, you're an absolute fraud. Well, I use, yeah, he's um, a fraud. And the thing about Bomani, he's from Jamaica, right? Like, why in the fuck would you trade in, like, a, a, a slum for another slum? But you don't have any control over that. You, 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 already, know, you already know the answer. That's why he's in Atlanta. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly why. All right. Um, what's your boy name? Uh, one of the main dudes who put crack in the streets. Um, Rick Ross. Freeway Ricky Ross, right? Yeah. He openly admitted to working for the CIA while he was in the hood, right? While he was still in the hood, living in the hood, he was working for the CIA. So I'm inclined to believe that in every hood in America, you have guys that's actually working for the CIA. I was working for Interscope and Def Jam for over 10 years, writing songs for artists, right? And I didn't know that I was writing songs for artists. I thought I was going to be this big rapper or whatever, right? And then I found out that they was just remaking my songs because they would keep asking me, yo, Bugsy, what you think about being a ghostwriter? Yo, Jackson, what you think about ghostwriting? I'm like, nah, I ain't writing for nobody else. Like, eh, get me, you know, let, 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 me, let me sign a deal. But they would never do it because the we conversations that they would have with me were let, like, I'm going to give you an example. They would say stuff like, uh, let's say a rapper put a dress on, right? And so they'll ask me something like, um, yeah, man, you seen you seen such and such album cover, man? You know, man, uh, I'm I'm like, yeah, man, you know, dude had a dress on, man. I ain't with that. I got a son. I can't push that shit, man. You know, he getting his money more power to him, but I can't do that shit. So I wouldn't know that I was telling them they can't fuck with me on that on 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 that kind of level, right? So it's the same thing with these Pan Africans. They got to go by the, now each record label, it's only six record labels and it's only six production, uh, movie production labels. And those record labels is owned, was started by the grandsons of the, of the six labels who started the television programs, right? So it's, it, it's one big family. They all small hats. But if, if, if you're dealing with them, you have a certain agenda that you must follow, right? So there's no such thing as going against that agenda because the whole reason you were picked to even be a part of the team, you was already groomed for it. So you know what you can say and what you can say. And then they give you the guys who make the guys who seem as though they speak in truth, but they're telling falsehoods. They they telling you half of the truth. Because if they wasn't, I told I told my daughter's mother, I said, she was like Colin Kaepernick standing up for something. You know, he took a knee and he's standing up for the real. I said, baby, <laughs> check this out. If Colin Kaepernick was really standing for something that was official, they would have never put the camera on him when he was taking a knee. Right. They just would have never showed it. And he wouldn't have been well, st- stay paid either. either. You, you see he what I'm saying? They, they, they just, they would have never, they gave Kyrie Irving all of this goddamn press. 
mm. all this press. If they didn't want nobody to know about it, he tweeted the shit up four months ago, and they <laughs> talked about it for the last month straight. Had nobody knew about it because they wasn't talking about it. So now that y'all talking about it, y'all making this shit world news. Which means that's, that they wanted it out there. They wanted it out there. So the first thing come to my mind is Hebrews to Negroes. I look at the shit and I say, well, damn, y'all teaching that we come from Africa on the back end. So you telling half truths. You telling half truths. Why you don't tell these people that the story of the 300s came from a group of Indians in America who fought 10,000 uh, 10, Vikings from a whole nother, or Persians from a whole nother land. And we sent out 300 brothers. And we won. Well, I, I, I hope that wasn't us because they said, you know, those 300 are supposed to be some, uh, you know, some weirdos. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. From, 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 what, from what I know, that really was us. And we was back. We have, we have never lost a walk. Somebody no, speak, told speaking me of 300, man. You know they got. I, I I think they're coming out with another one. I, I didn't even see the sequel yet because that that shit was boring. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna ask you a question now, Quan. What's the only people in all of existence that don't have their own army? You mean like forever? I'm saying as of today. If you was to look at every single people in existence, who's the only nation that don't have their own army? Black Americans. Yeah, I guess that would be it. We the most powerful I army mean, in even, all of even, even, even the Kurds, they don't have an uh country, but they got an army. Yep. And that's my point. Okay. We the don't, only ones don't that Africans don't have, an, have army. an army. They have an army, but they don't have like the fighter jets and stuff like that or the tanks. Yeah, they have some, but they you know they buy them from the white man. And yep. of course, you know, of course, just like uh when you go to the store, they sell them the uh Last, uh, last uh, model. <laughs> you know, well, they'll, they'll, outdated shit. Yeah, and stuff that they can control by computer. That's why it's Saddam Hussein got destroyed because all his shit was bought uh, off the shelf, so to speak. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so they knew what to do with it. So you make your own shit, then it's a different game plan. Yeah. Because you know, like Israel got their own models and yeah. China and Japan got their own models, and uh, the, uh, some of the Afghanis got their own stuff, but it's like low tech from Russia. Yeah, Japan, man, they're going sick now with the uh, fighter jets and shit. They got the most advanced fighter jets. See, they got that technology, man. When this shit is put to use with that military, man, it's going to be hard to fuck with them. <laughs> really hard. Because they, they claim, you know, they got to ramp it up for China because they were buying U.S. Uh, military equipment. And they said, the hell with this, we got to make our own. Because I see Japan, they already had advanced technology and the capabilities of nukes. They can produce nukes anytime they want. They probably already did a long time ago. But they just, you know, if it's needed, they'll, they'll let it be known that they got it. But <laughs> 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 That's why China... No matter how many times they want to threaten Japan, realistically speaking, they can't. I'm fuck still with waiting them. to see what type of moves England gonna make. Not at the not at the uh, so called Queen is dead, and um, uh, who 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 in charge now? Prince Charles, King Charles. He got egg the other day. Right? He got what? He got egg the other day. <laughs> I'm like, damn! Whoever did that was bold. They got the guy, but uh, <laughs> he got that. Yeah. Hey, how did that happen? I didn't even hear about this shit. I said, damn, that's bold, man. You can get your ass killed, really, doing some shit like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, I already or something that got his ass. I, I ain't looking to it uh, as to who the guy was. Uh, <laughs> they, they caught his ass. I was like, damn, see, because they could look at that as a, a lethal threat, not just eggs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I was looking into uh, the and then on top people. of that, he was associated with that Epstein stuff too. No, oh. I was looking into the original people of the land of Egypt. I mean, not Egypt, uh, England and Europe. I got it. Uh, it's screenshot in my phone, but I, I don't know how to like do all that shit while I'm on while I'm on live with y'all. But um, yeah, they 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 were some niggas too. Yeah, they were. And the problem and, with that Hebrew is like so. You also have to explain why you had black colonizers. <laughs> you also got to explain 
why does uh why do they constantly keep pointing all these biblical things happening in the Americas instead of in actually Africa? Listen to this person, uh, Vanessa Rivas, who I've been seeing coming up here uh, lately. Stop worrying about Jews. They're allowed to own anything they want. Niggas. Uh, don't complain about their Jew check. Worry about black criminals. Now, how are you going to tell us what to worry about? Exactly. Well, Vanessa, let me explain something to your ass. Um, Those Jews are so-called Jews because Jewish would be a female Jew if I'm black and if black was actually a nation then the sisters of the brothers who go by the name black would be black ish because they are like the men right of the nation that they come from so jewish would technically be a female jew by default but besides that they spend billions of dollars there was a brother uh two days ago on uh youtube when i wrote you on instagram Elquan, and i was like man these brothers kicking me out the chat and all kind of shit because i told them they said god damn it you you, you being anti-semitic and you're being racist and you're insensitive and disingenuous this is what they told me so i said okay when 50 cent signed to jimmy Iovine at interscope records and he dropped that album get rich or die trying which was promoted heavily as hell to my people and the whole damn album is about nothing but pimping, drug dealing, and murder. Yep. Why didn't they feel as though, you know, it was it was it was it was it was hurtful to my people? Why didn't they feel as though it was um what's the word I'm looking for? Why didn't they feel That's as though it was uh dumbing down my people or, 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 or just hurtful and violent to to the people that they was pushing it to? They made billions yeah, of dollars off them. This, you know, this could but, make more sense when it comes to mind. Have you seen that movie Shy Rat with Nick Cannon? And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it comes in the mind with that whole propaganda because they kept trying to blame it on the community instead of the actual people that were perpetuating it, which is yeah, Jewish. but not the people that's they had to have the that community. exactly. They had to have that white token preacher in that movie because children gonna look up to whatever they see. You could play. You could play a Spider-Man movie or any in any superhero movie. You could take a, a group of children that's never seen a superhero movie, play that movie, and when it goes off, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna play with each other and act out their favorite superhero within that movie. But the difference is growing up, I never cared about if Spider-Man was white or Superman was white or if Wolverine was white. That was yeah, my I, 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 I can tell you why. Cause they all were white. That's why. <laughs> exactly. well, well, I'm 32, so we had Green Lantern, you know. But nobody ever wanted to be Green Lantern. You nobody know? wanted to because for one, for one, he, he I got when, when I was a little kid, I didn't mind being Green Lantern. <laughs> well, Green Lantern was white, like at first, right? Now they, now yeah, he they was white Lantern twice. He had no three times time. actually. They they had one with a blonde hair, one brunette, and one redhead one. <laughs> I, you know, I'm still, I'm... his powers was based in like magic. The <laughs> other one was John, uh, no, um, Hal Jordan, which they rebooted the whole lore behind Green Lantern, making him. Yeah, sick. they they just turned Hal Jordan to a homosexual in the new comics. Damn. No, they Hell turned gay. Hal, I, man, Hal Jordan. I, I, man, if he's that gay, was, if the guy's gay, I, I, gay in the I, new I, man, it, was, it wasn't shit. Hal Jordan. It was Alan Scott. What uh, they did with Hal Jordan. Damn, you went way back. You know what? I don't, yeah. even want, I don't even want to think what that Green Lantern, Lantern is uh, making with that ring. <laughs> you had to say that, man. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this Vanessa, she's talking about uh, we babbling. You know whose uh, famous words uh, that is. <laughs> you just babbling. Nah, and, babbling. Uh, Vanessa, why don't you come up and tell us this? Jason Black was a shield for the funny hat. Oh, yeah, definitely that last show he did last week. I just found out small hats on Pornhub. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Man, they, they started, they started, <laughs> you know, they started the porn, they started the porn industry. <laughs> Like yeah, that Ron, Ron Jeremy, uh, that's that's the small yeah, he's still in prison. They sacrificed him like two years ago. I seen that Ron Jeremy. That's the 
Uh, I think he might be the most famous, uh, disgusting porno star of all time. He has small seen, head too. Yeah, I seen him doing some things. I said, man, what's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> I said, man, that ain't, that ain't. How can you be doing that kind of stuff? Yeah, bro, he he getting paid to do all this, and he's still greedy. Yeah, yeah I got to tell y'all, my mother listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good thing I, I wasn't explicit mom. with that. Then. <laughs> I can't she... say my real name, but she know my last <laughs> though. But yeah, Alquan, she uh, she a big fan of yours, man. Oh, thanks. Uh, you too, Tyron. She she loved the show. She loved the show. She was like, "Baby, when when y'all going live again?" I said, "I'm gonna write Alquan and ask him." You know, but uh, because I've been I've been I've been doing a lot of research and Surprising when I came across everybody Europe, know who like, Alquan is. So these brothers was black, but but you know they don't mention my name. The, uh, the so-called big black YouTuber, especially when they swipe a little bit of my presentation to incorporate it into theirs, and my name don't even come up. Yo, Yo and another thing is, go ahead knew about you. Like I didn't even know he knew about your content before. He just assumed that oh, you went on hiatus and disappeared. <laughs> did you see? Did you catch it from the beginning, uh, Tyron? No, I wasn't. I'm at work. Uh, I'm just not getting off of work. What okay. happened? Oh, no, because uh, I, I played Dr. Dr. Maya. It was funny as shit, man. <laughs> yeah. And so I know that he banned me uh, from his uh, uh, chat permanently. Uh, Damn, ban the number and like your, um, yep. any of your uh, emails. Man. Yeah, I showed the screenshot when I tried to get into his live the other day. Matter of fact, let me show it now since you're here. Matter of fact, hold on a second. 75 shot in uh Chicago, all black, and you worried about Kyrie and the millionaire. Well, yes, ma'am, because once again, when you say 75 shot, where did they get this so called gangster, this this gangster culture from? You know what I'm saying? They think they mobs, and I know real Italians, they ain't no mobs, you know. So when these so called small hats is pushing billions of dollars to push this hip-hop industry to our people. We have hip-hop as a culture, man. Who mm -hmm. owns hip-hop? Yep. Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter. Ain't that for George Soros? How many brothers was running around preaching that shit? And and George Soros is a small that, head, man. Um, Everything that we get as a culture don't even come from us. It's not organic to us because it don't come from us. We would never push that shit to our people. I would never push that shit to none of the none of the brothers in this chat. Everybody who been on this bitch long enough know I do construction. I I I, I can mow the wall. I, I could give children different guns. I could give them compact drills. You know what I'm saying? Impact drills, regular drills. See, Those see, are my guns. See, I, a, I got ramsack guns. I have a problem with people saying. Tell us what we need to be worried about. We worry about what the hell we want to worry about. You want to worry about something? You worry about that. She said you was worried about life, family, and y'all just worried about white men so much. Actually, they worried, worried about life, family. And then, okay, well, man. Let hold me on. I tell, I tell you what else. I tell you what else they're worried about. More, more than that, family is actually the least. Uh, fam fam family. But, uh, but hold on, family is the least thing they're worried about. <laughs> taking, taking over, taking over the world. It's the main thing they worried about. <laughs> yeah, that was gonna be my next. And then on top of that, Vanessa. it's a part of that. The, uh, the family Vanessa. part, the MP and, family. Good one, because I was about to tune out. <laughs> if, if they only worried about life and family, then how come they had a contract with the United States of America to give them the name as Jews in 1944? And it wasn't official until 1946. Why would they have to lie about being a whole different group of people? And why would they spend billions of dollars on pushing drugs, murder, and rape, and pimping as a culture to our people? How can I ignore that? If she I said, slap your child in the face every single day, Vanessa, matter of fact, no. If I pay someone to slap your child in the face until he turned into this gangster-ass brother, you know what I'm saying? How could you ignore what I'm doing? If I'm if on if, if on the surface I'm 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 giving even though I'm fucking over your children I'm giving a hundred million dollars to charity every month. Check this out. She said 102 shot on Father's Day in Detroit. Stop blaming the Jews. The Jews. <laughs> well, check it out. How many how many how many got shot? How many got shot in San Juan? Or Santa to Domingo? How many got shot in Los Angeles? Albuquerque, San Francisco, exactly. Michigan. 
I'm, I'm naming uh, so-called Latino spots. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, they own country. Yeah. Them coming up here. You you got videos yeah, Car- online. Car- Caracas. How many got shot in Caracas? Shoot, I got um recommended on YouTube a Hispanic woman getting her head cut off. Yeah. Matter of fact, before those gore sites got taken down, like I said, in Brazil. No, that shit ain't even taken down. It's still up. Yeah, but the, the the way it used to be, you know, they they change it around now. But I used to watch those videos, man. Those are some sick videos. They were recording. Yo, Miss Vanessa, who killing people, the, uh, chopping World them up. Geographic Association. And then like, game, rent game. Like, Wait, hold, 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 hold. She says, but Latinos ain't complaining. Only your people. But you're the only one complaining tonight. <laughs> now she said your people. I'm inclined to ask, Miss Vanessa, what is your ethnicity? When's smart. The, when, when's the last time you seen anybody in a black game life have they ever filmed somebody getting their head cut off? <laughs> you don't see that in the black American community. You mostly see it in foreign. Yeah, I, I, I remember telling countries. people that, in my opinion, the crime in the trailer park, the white trailer park, is way worse than the crime in any ghetto. All right, she's, Van- Vanessa says she's a fan of mine. Let's see. Let's see right now. <laughs> <laughs> let's see how much of a fan you are right now. <laughs> I know it's not the other Vanessa. The other Vanessa kills. I, yeah, yeah, I hope, hope she didn't uh, switch the Yo, name Yo, Vanessa, <laughs> your alias is not Munene, is it? Oh, she says she is. Nah, that ain't her. It can't be her. That's not that Vanessa. It, yeah. It's somebody else. Nah, that ain't her. That can't be her. Revis. That's just the... I just made the screen name up. Mm. <laughs> now, nah, that, that Vanessa wasn't uh, sensitive for small hats. Exactly. So your ethnicity is Jewish. Yeah. That's what she said. I'm a Jewish girl from Connecticut. <laughs> Vanessa, you ain't no small hat. Stop that yeah. bullshit, girl. Revis. Vanessa, if I was a heart, would you let me be? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> See, why are you telling Jews how to live? We're not telling them how to live. Uh, we're just telling them how they're living. It's because we got we got to combat out all these... Oh, but Tehran, let me say in the beginning, I, I played a... Uh, uh, excerpts from uh, Dr. Mott when I was on there, and she had that Dr. Karanga, and I read Dr. Karanga's crimes. So she was saying, "Why are you telling? <laughs> why are you telling the Jews how to live, Vanessa? I just told you that they uh, inadvertently tell so-called blacks how to live through hip hop and every other industry that they own. You know what I'm saying? Ladies, leave your man at home. The club is full of balls, and their pockets full of ground." And now you fell into your girl with a friend because it's 11.30 and the club is jumping, jumping. They paid those girls to teach our sisters how to disrespect men based upon a dollar. And a working man was put at the back front. I mean, at, at, at well, the they, back um, line. Charlie while Angel the, the, pimp, the gangster, the drug dealer was put at the <laughs> forefront. Or yeah. they just child, um Charlie's Angel theme song. Yep. Yeah. Now, now, I don't even remember that one, Tyron. Tyron. All the women independent throw your hands about oh, that, one. Yeah. <laughs> that was one. That was one of. The, I, I gotta admit, that was one of Destiny Child's hottest songs. So I gotta admit that. Yeah. I remember it when you said it, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I thought that was better than what Beyonce put out though herself. Though. I wish yeah. Sister Warrior was in here to deal with your ass, Miss Vanessa, because I don't even like dealing with women <laughs> like that. But, but Ty, Tyron, what I was saying with the Doctor Ma thing, I played the clip. She had that Dr. Moringa on, uh, Karenga, well, Karenga. and uh, she was defending the guy. I was telling Pernit, really? Pernit, yeah, why she would was, she defend the FBI agent unless agents fought together? Well, she said, because I, <laughs> I, I got on, matter of fact, hold on, let me play the sequence I was in. I, that's just, that's kind of short. Uh, and she, uh, <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny because she had the guy on. And she's defending this man, and she's a black woman. Well, let me uh, tell me if you can hear the audio, because I'm gonna just play the audio. All right. Uh, what's going on now? Oh, 
I'm not playing. That's why. I'm still at my mother's house, y'all. She just came in the room. Uh, you hear the audio? my ass off at the show. You hear the audio? You yeah. hear the audio? Uh-uh. You, you, you don't hear it? No. Okay. That means I got to do it like this. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, Let me know. I'm a, I want to add something you hear me now? to the chat. I think the, the bill, I see Brother Sep, Uncle you, Ross. You hear me now? I probably butchered it, Brother. So please. You, me. you hear the audio? Well, peace and love to you, family. Hotep, how Hotep, are you? Hold on. Yeah, I just want to. Uh... You hear the audio? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Did you hear Bro, I can't even hear because my sister keeps interfering with the call. Oh. <laughs> if you no, wait. I'm where? You hear it now? Right. Order copy. I ingenuity. Did you hear that? <laughs> Tyron. Hold on. Ain't this the beginning of the video? No, nah, this is just the part where I came on. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you about Check that name, cool too. difficulties right now. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I played another time. Then. Uh, but yeah, I used a funny name. <laughs> this is how stupid these Pan-Africans are. And these whole teppers. I used the name Sep Arat Car. Oh, I'm about to put it on uh, speaker. I used the name Sep Arat Car. Separate car. Yeah, Tyron, why you don't travel too lately, man? I know you be getting around and shit. Hold up, play it again. All right, hold on. I'm about to put it on um car speaker so I can hear it better. All All right. Hold on. I want to see them all all be successful. All right, did you hear that? Hold on. <laughs> Period. And we have to main... Mm, my lo- volume quality, hella low. Okay, let me turn up as high as I can. Maintain that. When we lose that, when we lose sight of that and our ego get involved... And we- that, did you hear that? The people, we... Did you hear that? Mm-mm. No, that's facts. I see another that's brother. Damn. Has the sound on. Damn. I guess it ain't working. This one calling me messed it up. Hold on. Let me log back in. All right. <clears throat> yeah, so... Nobody, white Jewish gives a shit. Y'all claim Jewish is when you promote a movie saying Jews worship the devil. I don't know what she's talking about, but all right, let me try it again. See what happens. Normally, there's no issue with this, but I see. No, bro, I, I appreciate you, Bob, but, you know, drop it in and let me know. I'm gonna, I want to add someone else to the chat. You hear that? Yeah, I can hear. All right, this is when I came in. I used this funny ass name. Uh, because this is how stupid these people are. Listen, that when we lose sight of that and our ego get involved and we start coming at each other, we've lost. Mm. We've lost the people. We've lost. The people. We're not on our job. No, that's facts. I see another that's how brother. I feel about it. I see no, brother. I, I appreciate you, Bob. You know, drop it in and let me know. I'm. A, I want to add someone else to the chat. I think the, the bill. I see brother Sep Uncle Ross Ka. I probably butchered it, brother. So please forgive me. Oh, well, peace oh, and love to you, family. Hotep, how are you? Hotep. Yeah, I just want to uh, say a few things in uh, regards to the doctor. Uh, it's good that he came on. You know, did, I, I caught it kind of late. Did he talk about Kwanzaa and how he came up with that? No, no, no. He talked about that in his last interview. So right. today, today he focused more so on, you know, Cointel Pro. And, and what took place, you know, in the 50s all the way to the early 70s with, you know, COINTELPRO uh-huh. and like activism. Uh-huh. Activism. We talked about that and, and what COINTELPRO looks like today. 
Okay, yeah, he, he would definitely uh, about that. He and uh, Mr. Farrakhan, because they're definitely part of the COINTELPRO uh, movement. And this man tortured and beat black women. Yeah, did you talk about that? Oh, God. So you one of them people that want to come in. Let me ask you a question. What happened with the... I never read the case, but let me ask you this question, brother. I want to ask you this. What happened with the, the black women? Because I did hear some things, but what was what was going on with that? Yeah, so these were, these were black women that he just grabbed off of the street and started torturing them? Is that what you're saying, brother? Well, in a, in a, in a, in a simplistic way, yes. No, it wasn't. That's, that's no, well, in a, in a, I, I, I actually, I asked you the question, but I knew the answer to it. But what you just said was false. Right. These, sim- these weren't. <laughs> no, these weren't. Black People women. snatched. Oh, was snatched up by Malachi right. York by his rhetoric, and yet I, they I, still I, got abused. Oh, you read. You read that. Did you, you, did you read? Did you read, did you read? Did you read? Did you read the case, brother? Or you just I, 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 Did you read the case? Did you read the case? Oh, uh, well, I'm answering. I did read a little bit of it, and I read that. You read a. You read a little bit of it. Let me ask you a question. How come you didn't know these weren't random females then if you read the case? Well, I, I didn't say random. I said they were black women. No, I... Oh, my God. I know. I, know. I mean, I, I can't, y'all. See? She couldn't, she couldn't handle it. She tried to trick me, but she couldn't handle it. <laughs> so she dropped me. That's how they do. Because he can't defend the case. You can't go against these women. <laughs> If the uh, people that were victimized by him were there, would she try and question um, how were they abused? Man, the I, man I, was taken to court and he was successively sued. Right. And charged. I, I later read, uh, or earlier in the chart, read everything that he did, and it was bad. If, if a man who wasn't a red, black, and green coon agent uh, did all those things, or even half of those things, he would be ostracized and shit on by every black power group out there. Exactly, because you wouldn't want anybody like that in the community because he's a fucking cult leader. Just like Malachi Z. York was ostracized from the community, especially yep. by poor Africans. Uh oh, we got somebody called Real Jew up here. See me, I'm ready for anybody, even if it's a, if it's a white man or a black man. I'm ready. <laughs> so, what's going on? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. How you doing? It's me, Vanessa Rivas. Oh, okay. Now, what's your... Uh, How you doing, Vanessa? I'm, I'm Jewish. That's not my name. I just made uh, that up to, you know, get of, on. Okay, what kind of Jew are you, though? Uh, I'm not Orthodox. Both my parents Ask are Jewish. Nasty. Huh? You an ask a nasty Jew? No, I mean, there's no... Like I said, I'm not Orthodox or anything. We kept kosher, you know, growing up. But I went to Hebrew school. That's it. Not, you know, had a bas mitzvah. Nothing special. You went know? to Hebrew Are you school. Are uh, that a Shemitic school? What? Is that a Shemitic school? Shemitic meaning people of color. Uh, what color? What 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 people color? Of color. The Hebrews. You know, like a human. The Hebrews. The human real color. Hebrews were people oh, yeah, you know, of yeah, real color. You. Wait a second. See. Just because you say you're the real Jews, who deemed you the arbiter of the real Jews? Wait, pause one second. What judge and jury did 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 everybody agree to 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 say you're the arbiter of who's a Jew? Hold on, hold on, pause one second. One second, Vanessa. Now, on the flip side, see, that's why I was trying to ask what kind of Jew are you. But see, that's such a weird question. What do you mean? What 